Hey folks, this is Brandon, the Chance with Herbert, coming to you from Lampkin Canyon Park in Porter Ranch, California. And I'm gonna be walking up this stream here, looking for California newts, two striped garter snakes, Baja California tree frogs, and red swamp crayfish. Hopefully we'll be able to find all four of them. Wish me luck. Check this out. This is, I'm no more than just a minute into my hike and already I found a California newt. And this is, this is a baby. This is like the smallest newt I have ever seen. And it's bright orange, very bright orange. I have never seen a newt so freaking small. I was certainly not expecting to find a newt this far south. They usually are a little bit further north up the creek than this, but this is the farthest south I've ever seen one. And this is like right by the bridge, like from here, right over here. Look at that. There's the bridge right here where I literally just started. And there's this beautiful, beautiful little newt right here. Now, as I've said before in my previous video, they can swim really well for a short distance and they'll prattle on the bottom. And the most interesting thing from what my friend Max Robert told me is that these guys, during the summer months, when the water gets too low or their breeding pool dries up, they'll wander for three miles to their hibernaculum den until the next breeding cycle. That's amazing. And their ability to swim is just like that of a crocodile. They'll tuck their legs back and use their paddle-like tail to swim. And as I've also mentioned, this is a species of special concern. He's heading right back into the water, which means you cannot collect or kill them. Look at that. Boom! There he goes. Just like that. Once he hits the water, you see how he just took off like that? Very, very beautiful. And this, like I said, this is the smallest one I've ever, ever seen. I've never seen a newt so small. This is definitely a newborn of this year. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this guy to what he was doing and move on. But all right. I was not expecting that at all. I wasn't expecting to find a California newt, a small one nonetheless, so quickly. Wow. That must be a really, really good sign. I'm hoping we'll see more. I just found my second herb of the day, a beautiful Baja California tree frog. And these are a very common species. This one's got a nice light brown on the side and dark brown in the middle. They come in a variety of colors. The most common ones I see are very dark brown or light brown, but they can also be green and also have a mixture of black of um, brown and green and that's to help with the camouflage in the foliage and like all frogs they love to feed on insects and they are everywhere they're so so common you usually don't see them out during the day except for after during the rainy seasons in spring because they are a nocturnal species like most frogs but they're a very nice looking frog nonetheless and they can swim really well, breathe underwater. And you see that band, a little dark band that goes between behind the eyes. And you see the moment he felt the vibrations or felt the movement, he took off or she. Not, I can't tell if it's a male or a female. I think that's a full grown adult. I think that's about as big as they get. They're not a very big species of frog, but they're still good size nonetheless spend a lot of their time during the day hidden in moist uh, hiding places like logs, caves. Very great amphibian, very, very common. Probably one of the most common frogs you'll find around this creek. And I'm definitely, I'm probably gonna find more of these guys along the way. Well. That's herb number two. Let's keep going. As you guys can see, I found my second California newt of the day. For the day, actually. Bright orange, just like the last one. A little bit bigger than the other one. A very beautiful animal, nonetheless. And you're wondering, well, why is it so bright orange? Well, it's twofold. One 
is because in some areas where there's a lot of orange leaves, like this here, you see, it blends in pretty well. So the flo bottom floor was covered with leaves just like this. He blend in really, really well. But the other thing is it's a warning signal. It's a warning because these newts are the most poisonous amphibians in the United States. Research has shown that the neurotoxin found in a single newt is potent enough to kill 1,200 to 2,500 mice. And that's if you eat them. If you handle them, no problem. Although I still recommend washing your hands afterwards just to play things safe. But if you eat them, it's you're pretty much in serious trouble. Possibly even kill you. However, there are some animals that will eat these guys and have a strong resistance to them. For example, two-striped garter snakes will eat these guys no problem because they have a strong resistance to them. Isn't that amazing? And look at the way they just prattle on the bottom like that. They move, they prattle on the bottom just like a crocodile or an alligator. Isn't that amazing? Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this guy to what he was doing and move on. But yeah, second California new for the day. Nice. Well, as you guys can see, I've got a very huge red swamp crayfish right here. Unfortunately, as beautiful as this animal is, I have to remove it from the ecosystem because, or from this environment, because this is an invasive species. This animal is actually native to the southeastern part of the United States from East Texas to Florida. They're also known as Louisiana crawdads, and they are actually a popular delicacy in Louisiana. The reason these things were introduced here is because they used to be used as fishing bait, and also were, I believe they were also in the pet trade. But people negligently release these guys into the river system without realizing the damage these guys can cause. These guys can cause massive damage to levees and dams because they dig burrows deep underground and cause bad erosions. And not only that, these guys will eat native frogs and even the native um, California newts. And because of that reason, these guys are actually part of the reason why the California newt is under the species of special concern is because these guys will actually eat the newt eggs and larvae and even occasionally adults. So it's best to remove this guy. You see how he whaps his tail like that? That's how they propel themselves backwards in the water. They don't swim forward, they swim backwards. And you can see the huge claws on this particular red swamp crayfish. They're big. I'd hate to get pinched by one of these guys. So as beautiful as this animal is, I have to remove him out of here, which is a real shame. It really is. I don't blame the animal. The animal's just doing what it would naturally do out in its own home range and out in the wild. It's just that people are can be very negligent. In fact, I'd have to say like 95 to 100% of all invasive species, both plants and animals alike, have been caused by humans. Which is a real shame. It really, really is. So, sorry buddy, but you have to go. As you guys can see, I've got a second Baja California tree frog in my hands. A little bit smaller than the other one. Similar colorations to the other one. But this is why I had to remove the crayfish. Because a crayfish, they'll eat this guy, no problem. Which can really put a dent and these amphibians, fortunately, they reproduce relatively quickly and they're very widespread, so they're not a species of special concern. And you can see I'm holding really, really still, because if I breathe, he's gonna jump. In fact, he's probably thinking about jumping right now. Now, they can jump from heights, from very large heights and survive, and he's pointing right at the water, so I'm gonna go ahead and release him into the water, and you'll see he'll hop off like that and dart off. He just stopped right by that rock. So I'm just go ahead and gonna go ahead and leave him right there and move on. But yeah, second Baja California tree frog for the day. Check this guy out. My third California newt. Oh no, don't fall, don't fall. Just stay right there, stay right there. Very good. Now ironically, this guy 
was right next to a red swamp crayfish. And in fact, he's right inside my net right here. Right, let me just kind of, well, let's see if you can give it an idea. Right there, see that? Now this guy, is not as, he's not as big as the first one, but he still would eat this little guy no problem. And that is a big, big problem, which is why he's going to be removed out of the ecosystem too. But this guy's going right back into the little ecosystem, right where he belongs. So I'm gonna go ahead and release this guy right back into the water. And I'm gonna take that red swamp crayfish out of here. You see how murky it is? It's very loose soil. And this will be perfect to release him. And down he goes. He disappears right into the mist. Forms of the muck. And this guy is going to be put into the bag with the other one. But look at that. You can see why they call them red swamp crayfish. Look how brick red it is. Not as bright red as the first one, but still a nice brick red coloration. I finally managed to get one of these western fence lizards to stop moving around so much to give you guys a good look at what they are. These are probably the most common species of lizards in California. And you find them pretty much everywhere. It's easy to tell the difference between a male and a female. You just gotta look at the underside. They're also called blue belly lizards because of it. Males have a much darker color blue and they're closer together on the belly. Whereas females have a much faded blue coloration and are much farther apart. They are insectivorous, which means they eat exclusively on insects. They are active during the day and sleep at night. And they are a prey source for all sorts of species from from other lizards to mammals to birds to snakes and they are a very important part of the ecosystem just like every other animal sorry i'm moving the camera around so much i'm just trying to wipe the sweat off of my face anyways i'm just gonna go ahead and leave this guy alone and move on caught my third red swamp crayfish and this one's definitely a lot softer than the other one and he's lost both of his pinchers. And the reason he's so soft is because he just recently shed his exoskeleton, which makes him more vulnerable. So he was probably going to some place to hide so, so his exoskeleton can be grown back. But unfortunately, just like all the others, he has to be removed out of the system. But yeah, they can shed their exoskeleton. And when they do, they're very soft and malleable. And they become very vulnerable to predation. So they have to go into hiding as a result. Red Swamp Crayfish number three. And here is Red Swamp Crayfish number four. Probably the smallest one I've seen, to be quite honest. But hey, every single one that's removed counts. I don't really know too much about them. Other than just, like I said, the name, where they originally come from, why they're an invasive species, how they got here. But these are still interesting creatures nonetheless. It's just a shame they have to be removed. It really is, but look how bright, bright red it is in the sun. Look at that. And that, look at the tail, it's just, it's very strong. Very, very strong. It's amazing, it's like really brown on top, except for the face and the claws. And that underside is just really bright red and orange. Interesting, very interesting. As you guys can see, I've managed to capture two red swamp crayfish at once. They're both about the same size, slightly different color, but they're going to be removed out of the ecosystem just like the others. But the one thing that I'm really, really disappointed in myself about is the fact that there was a third one I caught in the net and somehow managed to escape. So I don't know where the heck that guy went. And I can survive out of the water for long periods of time. And the second thing was that I found a two-striped garter snake right here, a little baby one. But instead of taking a photo of it to show, to post on iNaturalist and show that I did find it, I tried to catch it and when I went to grab it, I missed and it disappeared. And I have no idea where it is. It could be inside of the bank, it could be up in these trees somewhere, I have no idea. But yeah, I did finally found a two striped garter snake. I just didn't capture it on video or on or take a picture of it. I should have taken a picture of it before I tried to reach in and grab it. So that was really 
stupid on my part, but live and learn as they say. But yeah, baby two stripe garter snake. And about seven red swamp crayfish. Even though one of them got away, I still have these two right here. So these two will be removed and that'll be it for the day. So yeah.